Hey, this is Jeremy with MedEd Prep, and today we're going to be going over anaphylaxis. We're going to go over the treatment for anaphylaxis as well as why that treatment works, and we're also going to cover some concepts that are a part of anaphylaxis that might not get talked about too often. And you really need to understand that an anaphylactic reaction is essentially an allergic reaction that is just really, really exaggerated. And so all anaphylaxis is, is in an exaggerated allergic reaction. Now, um, over here on the side, we're going to have epinephrine, benadryl, and steroids because those are the three things that's going to be a treatment. We're going to discuss why. Relative hypovolemia and how that actually fits in with anaphylaxis and really all distributive shocks, as well as histamines and why they are a really big cause of the problem that, is, that leads to anaphylaxis. But to start off with, we're going to go over what an allergic reaction is. An allergic reaction is essentially whenever your body gets exposed to a substance that it doesn't necessarily like. And the way that it responds to that exposure is it's always going to result in vasodilation, which is going to result in holes that get created. And then those holes are going to lead to swelling, whether it be localized or systemic or whatever. But these three components are essentially what makes anaphylaxis anaphylaxis and what makes an allergic reaction allergic reaction. So to start off with, your body, it gets exposed to a thing. And this could be um, like you got bit by an ant, maybe you ate some shellfish, whatever the reaction is, it doesn't really matter because they're all going to result in essentially the same thing. So your body is exposed to a substance and these cells in that area, they release some signals and they're like, hey, uh, we got a problem. There's something here that's not supposed to be here. And so those cells send off those signals. And what it does is your body is going to respond to that by doing a couple things pretty immediately. It's going to lead to vasodilation, which is where your blood vessels are going to start getting a little bit bigger. And when that happens, that is then going to allow for your body to be able to actually send more blood into that area. And, but it's not so much the blood that's being sent to that area, it's the things that the blood carries, such as the antibodies, and that's gonna be like your T cells, B cells, those types of things. And so what happens is you now have more fluid in this area, but that fluid is inside of the intravascular space and it needs to get outside to the extravascular space. And the most effective way for your body to be able to do that is through the release of something called histamines. And what these histamines do is they essentially, they hit that cell or the, uh, the, the vascular wall and they poke some holes in it. And you're probably not even necessarily noticing that anything's going on at this point. But what happens is now that fluid that it was inside the vascular space is now able to leak to outside of the vascular space. And what that's going to do is it's going to then start to fight off that substance because of the things that it carries. Now, the vasodilation, you're going to notice because it's going to get a little warm. The holes, you're not really going to necessarily notice anything about that yet, but the holes resulting in the swelling, that's going to result in a little bit of swelling, but it's also gonna make it itchy. And the reason it's gonna be itchy is because these cells, once upon a day, they were really, really close to each other. I just kinda of drew them a little far apart. But because they get separated, your body doesn't necessarily like that a whole lot. So it's going to start feeling a little bit itchy. And that is how all these things go into, into effect. Your body's going to then fight off that substance, and whenever the substance is fought off, it's successfully destroyed or neutralized or whatever, your body's going to recognize that, and it's going to say, okay, cool, we're done, we don't have to worry about anything anymore, and everything can go back to normal. The itching is going to disappear, the swelling is going to disappear, the redness is going to go away, um, because the other thing is, with more fluid going to that area, you might be able to notice it on your skin with it changing colors. So... That is what happens for an allergic reaction in a very, very specific area. It's very localized. Now, an anaphylactic reaction is whenever all of the same things happen everywhere all at once. So, you have somebody that gets stung by a bee and they're highly allergic to bees. And so they just get stung right here on the arm. What you would expect is you would expect some immediate vasodilation, you're going to notice some immediate swelling because the body is going to start leaking fluids into that area. Now, to be able to fight off that substance. And the problem with that is if they have a susceptibility to anaphylactic reactions from bee stings, 
their body is going to recognize that bee sting and it's going to release everywhere and all at once. And so what that means is now this specific area that actually needs the body or needs the things to fight off that infection or not necessarily infection, but that invader, what's gonna happen is now because that happened here, now my right toe is starting to vasodilate. Now my thigh is starting to vasodilate. Now it's like everything in my stomach. So I'm starting to get really nauseous. I might start vomiting. But because it's releasing everywhere all at once, that's going to mean that in this specific area, there's not actually going to be a lot of fluid in that area anymore because the container has now gotten significantly bigger. And so that container size is going to result in relative hypovolemia. Because the thing about hypovolemia, hypovolemia is low volume. And if I have a container that is that big and it is going to hold this much fluid all at the same time, it's not going to be that big of a deal if it gets just slightly bigger. And so if it gets slightly bigger for just a moment, a little deeper, then your body's still going to be able to compensate for it and you're not even necessarily gonna notice that it's an issue. However, if that container gets bigger everywhere all at the same time and you have that same amount of fluid that's kind of occupying that same space, this was normal, but now relative to the new container size, we are now hypovolemic. We don't have enough fluid to fill up this new container because my body is having an exaggerated immune response. And that wouldn't necessarily be a big deal because you could fix that with just a little bit of fluids. But where it's a problem is that not only is the container getting bigger, but all the fluid that is inside of it is now leaking outside of it. And then you're gonna notice that because they're gonna start swelling everywhere. And so not only are you relatively hypovolemic because the new container size, now your vascular space is significantly depleted because of the swelling everywhere. And that's a really, really big problem. So how you go about fixing this is three big things. It's gonna be epinephrine and antihistamine, such as Benadryl, and uh, corticosteroids, such as um, solumedrol or decadron. And it just kind of depends on where it is or the situation that, that you have um, or what resources you have available. But you start off always, 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 100% of the time. The very first drug that you're gonna give is going to be epinephrine. And this is why epinephrine is gonna be something that can be given by just about anybody. And it's why um, EpiPens are really, really important for people who are susceptible to anaphylactic reactions because rapid administration of epi is going to keep the whole body in check. Because what that epinephrine does is the epinephrine is going to come in and it is going to cause the blood vessels themselves to actually uh, be able to shrink back down. And so if it's causing my blood vessels to be able to shrink back down, that's great, but we still have one more problem. My blood vessels might have shrunk back down, however, they still have the holes in them. And that is why very rapidly after that, if you go ahead and you give Benadryl or another type of antihistamine because uh, Zyrtec is uh, something that is being studied and has been studied for uh, these kind of, um, for anaphylactic reactions and allergic reactions. Um, but you'll give that antihistamine and what that's going to do is so that Benadryl is now going to block up all of these holes because it's going to displace the histamines that actually led to that reaction to begin with. And now that the container itself is smaller, so the container itself has now gotten smaller, and we have now successfully filled the holes that was causing things to leak out, now we can give steroids or corticosteroids 
And this is going to be the third thing that we're going to do because now at this point, we can get all that fluid that had just left, we can get all that circulating back in. And what that's going to do is that's going to decrease the swelling. It's going to decrease the itching because now we're no longer having things continue to leak out and the things that, are, that were leaked out, now they are all getting pushed back into the intravascular space. And it's not gonna happen all at the same time. Like you're still gonna have some residuals and stuff like that. But the key thing is we have made the vessel smaller. We have stopped the holes that have led to the issue. And we have allowed the container to refill itself through pulling the fluid from the extravascular space back into the intravascular space. And that's also where things like IV fluids is also going to come in at as well because you're going to be able to fix that relative hypovolemia that we had. So with all that being said, you need to understand that an allergic reaction is going to be made up of three basic things. You're gonna have vasodilation, you're gonna have holes that get created because of these things called histamines, and then you're gonna have swelling because of those holes. And if we look at these drugs and we look at these things that actually occur, we know that whenever we have an exaggerated allergic reaction, we know that epinephrine is going to fix the vasodilation issue. We know that Benadryl or some other type of histamine or antihistamine is going to fix the holes that get created. And then we know that steroids is going to allow that fluid to be pushed back into that vascular space to be able to combat that relative hypovolemia that happens and the significant shock that can happen for somebody who is in anaphylaxis. And that's gonna be the really big things about anaphylaxis that you really need to know. This is a very simple, in the grand scheme of things, view. Um, but right here, you're gonna notice a question about anaphylaxis and just write your comment down below for what you think the answer is. And see you next time. Again, my name is Jeremy, and if you like this video, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, or even leaving a comment down below. You can also always join our Discord community for a more interactive learning experience. Something we are doing is we are giving the first 300 people to sign up on the paid portion of our website 50% off of their first subscription, and you'll be able to see details for that down below. If you are a school or an instructor who's wanting to partner up with MedEd Prep, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at jeremy at mededprep.com and you will see that link down below as well. I'll see you in the next video.